First things first, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and Zotac. Just want to make that nice and clear at the start. Got it? Okay, let's get started. Now, NVIDIA launched their RTX platform in late 2018, and now that it's 2020, if you can believe it, uh, I thought it'd be a good time to look at the RTX platform as a whole and also answer the question of, is RTX or ray tracing becoming standard? Now, before we jump too far into that, I want to explain for those that don't know what ray tracing actually is. The TLDR is that ray tracing is essentially a way of simulating lighting in a digital scene that dates back to the early 80s, although it became popular in applications like Blender in the early to mid 2000s. Ray tracing basically just tracks the path of every single light ray that would be emitted from a light source in your scene, and then tracks what objects it would bounce off of and create shadows or reflections and so on. Now, the downside to tracking every single light ray from a source in a scene is that it's incredibly computationally intensive, aka it takes forever to do, even on incredibly powerful hardware. As an example, this uh, particle effect shot took literally days to render on my 24 core Threadripper machine, even with GPU acceleration, which by the way, you can actually buy on a t-shirt or hoodie like this one, link in the description. So it's not exactly the best way of doing uh, you know, lighting, especially in real-time applications like games. So in comes Nvidia in 2018, who say they've completely changed the game with their RTX platform. But how could they possibly be you know, tracking or rendering that many ray traces in real time. Seems impossible, right? Well, essentially they inverted the problem. Instead of tracking the light rays from the light sources then into the camera, they tracked the light rays effectively backwards out of the camera to see what objects they would bounce off of and then work out what colors they would have picked up along the way and what source they would have come from. Doing it that way saves a lot of computation time, which means that it's possible to do it in real time and makes it a lot easier. Now, just because it's easier doesn't make it, well, easy. It's still an incredibly computationally intensive task, which is the reason why all the RTX cards have dedicated hardware on board to deal with ray tracing, so that you still get a playable experience while still enjoying the visual benefits. Now, those visual benefits can come in a few different flavors and will depend on the game developers implementation of Microsoft's DirectX Ray Tracing, or DXR for short, to see what they actually want to implement in their games. A few examples for you are stuff like Battlefield 5, which is one of the launch titles for NVIDIA's RTX platform, and has some incredible reflections, especially stuff that's off screen that can reflect on, say, your gun, for example, that can be very nice to look at. Those effects tend to work best in the campaign missions, where it helps you even further immerse yourself in the already very pretty world. There's also other games like the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare, a game I've been playing entirely far too much of, which again, for some of the campaign missions, especially thanks to their enhanced shadows and lighting, can make for an incredibly immersive experience. And then there's also a brand new release, a game called Control that I actually don't have my hands on yet, but looks very interesting, has RTX support, and looks visually very stunning. Then there's also the other side of RTX, NVIDIA's DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, which is essentially their version of anti-aliasing. This means that you can either sharpen your image without much of a performance hit, or more impressively, run at a higher resolution than you would normally be able to play at, while basically not taking much of a performance hit. This is also supported in a whole load of games, including some of the ones I've already mentioned. So to bring this back to the question at the start of the video, is RTX becoming standard? I kind of think so. See, the next generation of consoles from both Sony and Microsoft have confirmed that they'll have hardware ray tracing support built in for better visual fidelity, lighting, and shadows, and all that good stuff. Now this will be interesting to see because not only will that bring a whole load of new games that support ray tracing out of the box, but also a load of optimizations that can mean even if you don't have a next generation console, but you have a, a more attainable, you know, affordable price card, something like the 2060 Super, you might be able to run ray tracing even easier than before thanks to those optimizations. And we might even see new features being added as well. Well, I think it's gonna be a little while before we see true budget hardware 
hardware that can fully support ray tracing in games, it's certainly growing in a variety of ways and will be interesting to see what new titles have DXR and RTX supports in the coming weeks, months and years. With that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the RTX platform in the comments below. What do you think of the, the platform itself? Do you think that it's becoming standard? Do you think it will be sticking around? Uh, and also, do you already use RTX? And if so, on which games? Anything at all, do let me know in those comments below. And of course, thank you to Nvidia and Zotac for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn any more about RTX or about Zotac's RTX line of graphics cards, do check out the links in the description down below. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, do hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. And if you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching sponsored videos and subscribing, then do take a look at the links in the description down below. Like I said, there's merch if you want hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs. And there's stuff like Amazon and Overclock which create affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them. Or there's a load of other stuff down there too. Feel free to go check them out. Otherwise, if you want to see more videos like this one, including perhaps the RTX 2070 Super Review, then do take a look at the videos over there, and otherwise that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.